Security Investigative Reporter for TV, Radio, and Press Media. And Kimberly has covered the news with an outside the Beltway perspective. Her experience as an investigative journalist ranges from national security issues like Gitmo, remember Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, 9-11 trial, immigration, foreign policy issues. She is the TV correspondent for CW6 News San Diego, One American News Network, and uh, the website is ZKD Report. By the way, she streams live at Periscope.com, Facebook, and YouTube. Kimberly, Kimberly, are you there? <coughs> oh, excuse me. How's it going out there? Ah, uh, see, you, you get all choked up when you get on this program, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you uh, are you uh, on Facebook now? As we yes, say? I am on Facebook. I'm looking at. Oh, I've got Mark Evans with me, Stephen. We've got a Michael Clares and um, a Sam. So I'm actually looking at all the people, you know, giving them shout outs here for listening and viewing us live here. Yeah, I've got you now and you got a Modine. All right, <laughs> hello to there. So there you go. Uh, I know you're going to talk about uh, the caravan and you probably have a couple of thousand words on the uh, fake bombs. I guess you call them fake bombs. Or yeah. Maybe okay. real bombs that were made not to go off, but uh, uh, it's your show, lady. What do you What do you want to talk about? Well, I, I think that you know, you know, I, I want to you know touch on the other stories that I covered this week because right now it's wall to wall coverage of this bomb thing. I just have a few notes that I wrote down about the possibility um, and why this was done. I mean, first of all, I, I don't think that any you know you know, GOP or Republican, there's anyone out there would, that would actually want to do this. This is actually would be, you know, hinder the party. So I think that we need to take party rhetoric out of this. And you just have to look at who's to gain by this. And, you know, the, the, it's very obvious to me that if you go after all of these Democrats, you know, people who've been very, very critical of President Trump, I mean, it, it just tries to you know, throw another wrench into the news cycle. And if, you know, all of your listeners are very well educated and the viewers out there watching this as well, they know that, you know, the president's riding pretty high right now and his poll numbers are on the rise. And, you know, we're two weeks out from the election. So what better way to stymie the election and kind of rain on his parade, so to speak, than to do something like this? I mean, we always take assassination attempts seriously in this country, as we should. But this is a situation where, you know, most people are like this. It was so amateurish that, you know, it, it did, didn't warn the wall to wall coverage that they're getting. And then to insinuate that the president himself was behind this. Oh, yeah, goodness. You know, how many votes is that going to give uh, yeah. Biden? <laughs> yeah. just, I'll say, I'd rather say uh, Kamala Harris. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You know, well, neither one of them. But well, I mean, we look, Kamala, at, uh, we look at we look at the. We look at the early voting numbers, and that's going to scare the Democrats to death. I mean, the early voting numbers for the Republicans are almost two to one in a lot of these key states. So that's really got to, you know, send shockwaves through the Democrats who are hoping to take the Senate and the House. The Senate's go gone. I don't think they have any shot whatsoever. It'll be close in the House, but, you know, it could remain the same, but it's going to be a much narrower margin. So it's just, it's really, you know, it, it, this, I just think, is election, you know, last week or two shenanigans, trying to get the, the media to cover something that's not positive on the president's front. And uh, the media, what better way to send it to CNN? And obviously now we're going to, like, all of the world's going to focus on it because now media is covering this wall to wall. There are other much more important stories going on right now, and it just is very saddening to me oh, to yeah, see that we're yeah. chasing this so hard. Well, when they send it to CNN, they're saying the guy didn't realize that Brennan, because it wasn't sent to CNN, like, hey, Mr. CNN, you yeah. know what I'm saying? They sent it to Brennan, misspelled his name, yeah. and it was like, not to CNN, because they had the wrong network, he works for NBC. Yeah. But here's the other thing, is that, you know, they had the fake dossier, all right? Yeah. And I see where people are saying, maybe they got the fake bombs now, and maybe they weren't so crude, because they were all sick, so they wouldn't yeah. So, you know, that kind of tells you something, or it tells me yeah. something. I don't think that guy yeah. was so stupid that he put the, our girl, I'm yeah. sorry, I apologize. <laughs> uh, <laughs> whoever did it, all right, I don't yeah. think they were so stupid that, yeah. uh, that every one of them were made not to explode. Yeah. we got to take that world-famous break. Kimberly, <laughs> okay. we'll do sign language during the next four minutes, and uh, 
uh, she'll act like she's cutting, you know, or something like that. Uh, you can go to her, her Facebook and catch her doing all these soft moves. I, I think it's all sweet tapes and stuff. So, yeah, no. Kimberly Dvorak, it is the KDReport.com, and make sure you got that last name, D-V-O-R-A-K, Kimberly Dvorak, because she's on Facebook right now. And we'll be DRN Digital Talk, Chuck Wilder here with Kimberly Dvorak, and uh, she's uh, one of these Washington, D.C. gals, and I was uh, going to ask you a question during the break. I uh, went to DuckDuckGo, check it out, because here's what I'm hearing on this bomb story, okay, is that Biden, Clinton, Hillary, uh, who else was it? Obama. Anyway, uh, yeah, Obama, right, okay. The Secret Service intercepted these packages, yeah. okay? Because, as I understand, they're not mailed directly yeah. to these residences. Mm -mm. Any package of a former president goes through the Secret Service headquarters first. Yeah. And it has been, ever since okay. we had the, the Oklahoma bombing back in the 90s, that's kind of, things have been redirected, and then we had the rice and scare as well. So, I mean, all of this stuff has been changed. It's, it's been like that for a decade or two at least. Uh -huh. And the Rice and Square uh, scare did not warrant the media attention that they're giving to the other. No. The current scare. No. <laughs> Interesting, of yeah. course. Yeah. Well, I mean, and we remember this earlier this year that, that there was suspected Rice and that actually made it to um, Donald Trump's kids, their home, they actually made it to their apartment. So, you know, that was actually a little different situation where, you know, that actually made it to the residents. And that was a story that maybe was out there for 10 minutes. I'm being a little facetious, but comparatively with this, you know, you're looking at it. Yeah. And I mean, I, I just kind of, you know, I, I, like I said, I think that this story, everybody wants to shift the narrative. So they want to talk about this. They want to talk about, you know, you know, that Donald Trump and his people and on the, the basket of deplorables are responsible for things like this. But I think what they're afraid of is they're afraid that, you know, the, the American people do not want to go back to the good old days of the Obama administration, where we had zero to no growth in our economy. We had high taxation, regulation, job losses. We were never going to see manufacturing jobs again, um, according to President Obama when he was in office. And unlike the Obama economy, Trump's economy is not based on a $787 billion stimulus package and the relaxation of regulations and uh, the lowering of taxes has it unleashed our economy. And it's not a fake economy. I mean, everybody wants to use these, these terms, but our economy is like kicking on all cylinders. And I just think that, you know, the, the left is looking at it like, you know, what do we have to offer? Are we going to go back and, you know, the, you know, have the Fed run our economy and the economy is doing well despite the Fed getting involved in trying to tamp down on the economy right before the election, oddly. But you have to look at this. I mean, the, the president has been responsible for these trade deals as well that have benefited American people. And then you've got China that's in the mix in Canada. And you've, you've got to understand that this is something I think most people don't, you know, realize or even think about. But when we're getting all of these new jobs and we're having all of this money coming back to the United States, that money is coming from somewhere. So if it's coming from China or Canada, sure, they're going to be upset because that's taking from their economy. But America has been the patsy for so long, they've forgotten what it's like to, you know, be in a fair, you know, trade situation. And, and Trump is just, you know, thrown down and said, yeah, you know, we're, I'm, it's America first, I'm a nationalist. And if you ask most most American people, they'd probably say the exact same thing. And I guess, uh, you know, if you don't have a platform for the upcoming election, uh, then, you know, the, the bomb scare yeah. and uh, the caravan is very, very good distraction. And, and both of them uh, are aimed at how bad, like you say, the deplorables are, the deplorables. Yeah, deplorables. Yeah. 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 I'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. It was built on immigrants, yeah. not illegal. Yeah. All it, right. Exactly. Well, I mean, and this is the thing. It's just, when you look at this, you know, it's going to be push come to shove this time. I think that the president is tired of having his own Congress not work with him on getting this wall built and not work with him to get some of these loopholes closed with this, you know, illegal immigration or these refugees or political asylum seekers or whatever it is that they are coming up from Honduras crossing through three countries to get to the United States. When in fact that the UN states that the first country you land in is where you seek asylum. You don't cross through several countries and then say, I like your welfare benefits better up here. That's not the way it works here. And I think that, you know, if, if I was advising the president, which I'm clearly not, but if I was advising the president, I would recommend to him exactly what Mr. Nixon did when he took office. And he, you know, his wife was very big, as you know, with the, the drugs and said, we're going to stop drugs. We're going to get rid of the drugs. So, you know, President Nixon calls the Mexican president and says, hey, you know, we, we got to do something about all these drugs. You know, what, what can you do to help us? And the Mexican president said, well, Mr. Nixon, you know, we don't have a drug problem. You have a drug problem hung up. And then, of course, Nixon called up down to the border and they shut down the U.S. border from any kind of transit, period, going north or south. And two days later, the Mexican president calls and asks, what can I do for you, Mr. President? How can I help you? That's exactly what needs to happen. That's what I would recommend that the president do on this to show that, look, he's really serious about it. There's precedent in doing this. And by these people blatantly just traveling up because they don't like their life at home, it's really rough. And I know a lot of people out there, you know, we would all try to do something similar, I suppose. But why aren't we trying to help those countries you know, get better in their country so they don't come to America. And we're not looking at those solutions. All we're doing is band-aiding it. And the American people, I think, are quite upset with the situation and they see that bridge with all those pictures of people coming and they just see it as a blatant breaking of the law here. So I, I think it's a winner for the president anyways. I think, like I said, if I was advising him and he wants to make a big deal right before the election, like a day or two, he does something like that and I think he, he wins re-election in 2020. And I'll, I'll tell you something, Kimberly, uh, in my newscast, I, I had a report, uh, and it's about the poverty rate. It came from the Pew Research okay. in Honduras. 64.5% of Hondurans living in poverty. Yeah. El Salvador, 34.5%. Guatemala, 53.7%. Mm -hmm. And those three countries, have something in common with Mexico, and that is their highest income, all right, for their nation comes from remittances yeah. from Us. America. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think like a third of the country, like I think a third of El Salvadorians and a third of Guatemalans, I think about a third of all three of those countries, their population lives here. So <laughs> it just... There's something wrong when we're when we're allowing people to do do these things. And Americans, you know, we 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 we're very humanitarian oriented. And whenever there's another country that has a tsunami or earthquakes or whatever, we're very quick to be helpful and send our our military if need be and, and medical aid and money to rebuild. But I just think that Americans are looking at this and they're getting tired of uh, being the world's, you know, police officer, being the world's uh, bankers, being the world's, you know, we've got to fix every problem, it has to go through the United States. And they'd like to see their roads and bridges fixed here before we fix them over there. So I just, I mean, I, I think that, you know, again, it's, you know, I go out and when I'm here in DC and I talk to a lot of different people and I ask a lot of my compadres that I work with here in the media. And i like, have you guys like actually left Washington DC? Have you like driven, like just to the Mississippi even, just, I mean, they don't think there's anything past the Mississippi. They're flat earthers when it comes to that. Um, no. <laughs> they joke about that a lot here, but you know, it, it's true. They don't leave. So they think everybody thinks like them. And that's just simply not the case. The majority of Americans do not think like the elites here in the, you know, nation's capital. You gotta wonder if uh, Diane Feinstein has ever actually been down in the, uh, Part of San Francisco lately yeah. in the streets and seeing how bad it is, yeah. you know, and Maxine Waters, you know, uh, it's, uh, boy, I mean, it's terrible. Yeah. America should not look like that yeah. at all.
Yeah. You know, in your in your latest report, uh, uh, you have where Vice President Mike Pence mm -hmm. was weighing in on the caravan. Yeah. And he said that the Honduran president uh, told him the caravan was funded by leftist organizations as well as Venezuela. Yep. Uh, you know, we keep hearing how Soros is involved in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran across the video and then I went to try to see it and it uh, had been blocked. Four oh four. It was uh, supposedly showing them uh, taking payments, standing in line, getting their money yeah. to go. And, and they're all wearing really nice clothes. Yeah. Uh, nice and it costs a lot of money to travel up north. I mean, you know, the, I guess they have to eat and they got to pay the coyotes to get them up through the country. And I think also this is where Trump was a little disappointed with the Mexican government, where they looked like they were maybe going to hold some of these people from getting in um, through Mexico's southern border. And then they just did it, you know, and they allowed them to, you know, kind of go through. And I think the president's a little frustrated that these other countries are just allowing these people to go through and, and travel through their countries to get up to America. And this is where, you know, the president can do exactly what the Australian president did um, 15 or so years ago, where there was a lot of refugees coming from South Central Asia, and they were trying to get to Australia by boat, and he went on air and said, we, you, you, you're not coming to this country. We are a country that has a generous immigration program, but we decide who comes here. You don't come here and tell us who's going to come to our country. We get to make that decision. And I think that you'll look to President Trump to do something similar as this next caravan makes its way up to the southern border here. I always pointed out uh, probably uh, too much, but uh, the United States of America takes in over 1 million people yeah. in immigration. 1.2. Yearly. And that is more than all the other countries combined. Yeah. And yet, you know, you still hear this, oh, we have to do more for these people and more for these yeah. people. And, uh, you know. Well, uh, I think, I think well, it was, I think Tucker Carlson did a phenomenal job. I think it was on Monday or Tuesday when he, you know, had Jorge Ramos on his program and they were talking about the caravan. And after Jorge is like going through and doing all the talking points and these are all good people and they're sad, they just want a better life. And Tucker says, you know, look, I'm asking you a serious question. He's like, if I'm being serious, and he does his little mannerisms and whatnot. But he asked Jorge when they get across the border how many families he was going to be putting up in his Miami mansion that he lives in. And, he, and Jorge's down there, oh, well, well you know, you, you don't understand the issue. I mean, nobody's coming to my house. And then he asked a follow-up question. How much money are you donating to help these people that are coming to the country or are about to, that are in the country and they're going to send their kids to school. How much money are you giving to help? And it's, and the answer is the same. Well, you know, that's not, that's not the question here. That's not what we're supposed to be talking about. And it's because they don't donate the money and they don't help. They're doing it for ratings and he's doing it for who knows what. I guess he thinks all of the deplorables should put their money together and pay for all these people because the Democrats don't want to pay for any of them but they want everybody else to pay for them. And I think those kind of arguments are so such winners for for elections. I mean, it just, I mean, you put that out there in front of, you know, American people who are struggling to get by and who are literally working paycheck to paycheck, they look at that and they're like, you know, who are these people? You know, and uh, and like I said on the, on the first segment, who wants to go back to the Obama economy? I mean, the Cars for Clunkers program, is that what we want? I mean, you know. And, you know, it's, uh, I really like it now that, uh, and, and I only see it on Fox, of course, maybe it's on a, a couple other stations, but uh, where they're showing, you know, where, especially Obama, they're really running that one about, you know, we got to close those borders, too many illegals coming yeah. across. And, you know, every one of those hypocritical Democrats yeah. higher up have all made those statements, yeah. you know, about how we have to close the border. And mm -hmm. that gets them elected in whoever they were talking to at the time. Yeah. But boy, I'll tell you, once they get into office, wow, it is unbelievable. Yeah, but both parties That's do crazy. it, Chuck. I mean, we have to say that the Paul Ryans, you know, of the, of this of the Republican Party, they're also open border people. I mean, in, you know, I have to call, I mean, obviously he's not going to be around in January, but I mean, they haven't done a whole heck of a lot and they haven't helped out the president on this issue one iota. 
And um, so, I mean, I, I just think the, the jig is up for a lot of them as well. Yeah, but I think uh, we know that like the Chamber of Commerce and the rhinos, yeah. okay, like Paul Ryan, mm -hmm. they don't hide it like uh, and deny it. And they're yeah. so hypocritical <laughs> about, you know, yeah. the double standard. Yeah. Uh, it really glares out at you when you see, you know, Hillary and Bill and, and Schumer, even say, Schumer, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, or Kamala Harris. Say, We're all going to get like extra money every month. Yay. Sign me up. Oh, $6,000. Yeah. <laughs> so said, Boy, she must have a big, big safe somewhere. Yeah. And, <laughs> Let them, let them come and knock on your door and say, uh, hey, you know, we're from Honduras. We came from the caravan. We're so glad you love us, and we're going to stay at your house. Yeah. There's uh, there's yeah. a big deal they got going on in Texas right now that's saying, hey, if any of you people from the caravan get over, uh, what you do is you look for the political sign. And don't go to the one that says Ted Cruz. <laughs> you know, you go to the other one, you know, the Robo or whatever his name go is. Go to Beto. And I'm sure you'll let you. Uh, you can stay at his house, but stay away from Ted Cruz. You know, that's a, <laughs> oh, that's a mean, mean Republican. Kimberly, we're going to be right back and wrap things up in just a moment. And uh, let me see here. I think, uh, yeah, I, I keep wanting to make sure I don't miss any important questions I wanted to ask you. And, and I got that one about the Secret Service because uh, I saw so much about that. Okay. Man, yeah. And why weren't those staffs canceled? Well, because they weren't. Actually, never mind. We'll be right back with Kimberly Dvorak. She's streaming live as we speak at Facebook. And you can catch her at Periscope.com. And every once in a while we pop up on YouTube. And her website is the KDReport.com. CRN, Jeff Wilder, with my guest Kimberly Dvorak. By the way, quick uh, program note. When next we meet, I got Michael Cutler. And we'll be talking about the impending alien invasion of the left plays the compassion card for destructive ends, and also uh, Jim Corey, he's the lawman, and uh, his latest, uh, deep state activist targeted by unknown bombers, or I guess we could say bombers, or who knows, or nobody, I don't, boy. Well, Chuck, I just, yeah, Chuck, I wanted to let you know that I think the president was watching, because he just tweeted out here, and I'll read it live, it said, to those in the caravan, turn around, we're not letting people into the United States illegally. Go back to your country, and if you want to apply for a citizenship, like millions of others are doing. So he must be watching us, and he must be listening to me. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I think I mentioned to you last time, because people say, there's a big thing like, do you think uh, we should have uh, uh, body, uh, what was the word there? Well, physical harm on these people, yes or no. Yeah. Um, I think, like I say, use the water, high pressure water hoses if it gets to that. Because I believe that there's this little technicality of one or two get across the border. I mean, it opens it up for everybody. Yeah, well, I mean, and they're looking for, it's like the wet foot, dry foot thing with Cuba. You know, they get on that soil, they get on our soil and everything kind of changes. So, I mean, this is, again, this is where, you know, preemptively, you know, say they're going to be getting to the border in a day or two, then preemptively, I think shutting down the border for all transit going north and south would send a strong message. I mean, you would think that the Mexican government who may, you know, one of their top five um, earning categories in their country, like these other countries, are remittances from the United States. You shut all of that stuff down for a couple of days, they're going to wake up and, and be calling President Trump saying, how can we help you, Mr. President? We really need to, you know, figure this situation out. That's what it, you know, is going to take. And, and and Trump is the kind of person that could possibly do it or could have the cojones, if you will, to do something of that nature. And that's what needs to be done. Yeah, could you imagine uh, what all Trump could do if he uh, didn't have the mainstream media against yeah. him and uh, so many Americans yeah. that are convinced that, uh, oh, yeah, and, yeah, it's a and shame. Uh, you know, America's never been great, and then he has this whole, whole new ad going, you'd never think he'd yeah. that. It's just a lot of deception, a yeah. lot of deception. Yeah, that's sad. Very sad. Yeah. So, uh, are you uh, in Washington, D.C., or are you back in San Diego? No, I'm in D.C. I'm going through December, so I'm here for a bit. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you'll Christmas 
that's where everybody sends your Christmas cards, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Happy holidays. Come on. Let's, let's be politically correct here. Happy holidays cards. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Well, you know, I got to dig out my thing. I always play it. You know, I get a lot of comments on it, but it's, uh, it's a fantastic uh, song by a choir, and it's like the ACLU, that's their initials, but it's uh, the Christian Unification something. And it's, uh, you know, if they don't say Merry Christmas, don't shop there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, more trouble. I like yeah. to stir it up there. So, uh, that's good. Kimberly, the KD Report is still the best place to, to get all your stuff, right? Or yes. On Facebook and KD Bobby Report, Twitter. Facebook, Twitter. You can or Google my name on you know, for YouTube. I'm all over the place. You know that, Chuck. I know, boy, I'll tell you, you, all of a sudden you're growing on your YouTube, and there we are, you and I. Well, mainly you. That's good, though. Yeah. She's the better half. All right. Hey, thank you very much. Look forward to our next visit. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Kimberly Deborak.